Well, welcome back to the second day of our online global self-awakening retreat. I'm Zarathustra. I'm very happy that we're here together and share these moments together and being a part of the unified field of oneness and love. And being on this journey, this precious journey towards awakening, the journey within. Our friend Tanaz, she asked us to talk about this sense of loneliness, this feeling of being this yearning for love for wanting to be with someone, wanting to have a companion. Why are we feeling? But she's not here. She's probably going to show up soon. But somebody else wrote to me and asking me a similar question. So why don't we get into that? Because this is a major epidemic and we're all dealing with it and something you cannot escape from this nagging feeling of loneliness. Is it familiar with anybody here? Yeah. Did you experienced that before, by the way? <clears throat> Why do you feel lonely? Have you ever thought about it, why you feel lonely and there's this emptiness or this feeling like you're left out where you don't really connect, like you're an outsider, always looking from the outside, you're looking at the party, people are all drinking, having fun, laughing together, but you are not a part of it. You try to, but you don't feel like you're a part of it? Some of you are very good in going from one relationship to another relationship. One relationship ends and then immediately you start another relationship. It's a part of your destiny. You do that. Some of you may stay with one person. It's rare these days because we're in a modern era and, and nobody does that anymore. It's not the new trend, but some people do it. And the relationship may be rotting, but you hang in there. And you say, okay, I don't want to leave this man or this woman because of my kids or because of that, or economical situation. But down deep, it's not any of it. It goes much, the, the roots of it goes much deeper. It's not because of kids or money. They are valid, absolutely. But it's something deeper than that, which I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to bring light in the truth of loneliness. Now, hopefully that's going to help you to realize what is really haunting you all of your life. And you're not aware of it. You're aware of it that you're lonely, but you're not aware of the root of it and what to do with it. How to get over this. So we're looking for relationships. Does it sound familiar? Looking for the soulmate, the twin, twin flame. And it comes once in a while and you find him or her, but it doesn't last. And if it does last, it changes to something else. It's not fulfilling. I'm sorry, I got a little something in my eye. So, oh. 
some of us need to fill up the space with empty space of loneliness with alcohol, pills, drugs, food, ice cream, sugar, constant entertainment, whether we're watching movies or we have to be in parties or we have to be somewhere that fill up the space because I cannot tolerate this empty space that I'm alone by myself. It scares me. It makes me very uncomfortable. And I'll do whatever I have to do in order to fill up this gap. Some of us have to leave relationships before the partner leaves you. It's our pattern that we leave before he or she leaves us because I don't want to be left out. I want to be the one who leaves first. The deep fear of abandonment. So it's better I quit the relationship before he does or she does. Some of us have to fill up the space with pets. You see, you drive around, you go to post office, you go to restaurants, you go to places. You see a lot of times these girls or women that they have a little itty bitty dog carrying with them everywhere they go. I'm wondering when they go to bed making love to their lover, the dog goes with them or not. I've, I have yet to, to discover that part, but I haven't dated one of them. So, I don't know. Maybe somebody has can tell me about it. But they can't go anywhere without the little dog. The dog has to be attached to them all the time. And some, adding up more dogs, more cats, you know, from one or two goes to 15, 16. All of a sudden, you go to their home and there's cat hair everywhere. They're all over you. You can't even sit there and relax without cats jumping all over you or dogs jumping all over, licking your face or jumping on you and putting their marks on your clothes or ripping your clothes and they say, oh, it's so cute. Ah. Okay. Because they just can't be alone on the, by, by themselves. Something has to be there all the time. There has to be a presence of another being in their space in order not to face what they have to face. And they say, okay, we're animal lovers. Great. There's nothing wrong with being an animal lover. I'm not against that. Don't take me wrong. I don't want you to come back and tell me that he doesn't like pets or he's against animals. Or whatever I'm, I'm not against or pro it I'm just pointing out to something else I'm using this as a an example to help you understand something something which has been hunting you all of your life and that same thing that I'm about to reveal to you is the cause it's the very root of every decision you make in your life. 